this video clip we will demonstrate a short leg cast. These are used either non-weight bearing or weight bearing. You can always breathe a sigh of relief when your physician comes up to you and says it's non-weight bearing and it makes it a lot easier on you. We're putting the cast stand, applying it. He has such a high arched foot that if you incorporate that across it, you'll have a nice bothersome air gap that you don't want. So cheat a little bit to the lateral side. If you're having a hard time getting him to 90 degrees, slide the foot back a little bit more posterior to the foot stand and put it more on the ball of their foot. In this video, I'm doing something that I don't do very often, and that is actually measuring. You'll just eye up the patient and the particular cast you're doing, and you'll get it really close. Always smooth it out. Put a little TLC into your application of the stockinette because you don't want any underlying wrinkles that may irritate the patient and you don't want to have them complaining about this. They have to wear it sometimes up to four to six weeks, so be cautious. apply the foot onto the cast stand and I always have them point the knee right to my chest, make sure that alignment stays there and you can talk them through it. We have the contralateral side, the opposite foot on a foot stand to help balance the patient so that they can approach the edge of the cast table without feeling like they're going to fall off or lose the balance. A prominent area on your lower leg is your tibia, your shin. There's not a lot of soft tissue there, so he's showing how you can uh, put an extra layer of padding there to start with. That way you don't have to wrap as much around the rest of the leg. Okay, the other important bony landmarks, what he's pointing to right there is that fibular head. Make sure you do not go up with your fiberglass on top of the fibular head. You want to stay at least two or three fingers distal to that so you're not pinching off that perineal nerve and causing a foot drop. Points of concern definitely are the heel, right where the Achilles inserts to the calcaneus. And you want to make sure that they're padded well and also the lateral and medial malae line. Oftentimes I actually put those on first and then I can put my anterior shin portion on over top of those. Short leg casts will usually expose the toes. There are also techniques that will encase the toes, will bring it out to the distal end. You can see here I'm trying to show you the angle of how I want to approach this. When you lay your cast material down, you don't really want to go straight across. You want to go on an angle. Cast padding you want to put straight across so that you have adequate padding on the distal ends of the toes. through and make certain that you're not generating a lot of wrinkles. Your cast will look as good as your underlying cast padding. If you have a lot of wrinkles and unevenness, your cast will display that on your end result.
With the application of the soft roll, I always have a tendency to put it on fairly snug and may have a little extra layer from time to time. It all depends. You just need to figure out if this patient will be wearing for a long extended time or if it'll be a short duration. If they're post-surgical, you'll want to definitely give them a little bit extra padding because they still may have a propensity to swell and you don't want that. Distal extremities always swell a lot and so you have to be cautious of that. You'll notice his lance started on the toes, the angle he used, so he's not going straight across. That way he doesn't cut into either the big toe or the small toe. It's a way that you can have the toes out in an even fashion. As far as technique goes, as you're wrapping around the foot and transitioning to the ankle and the heel, there's not really a technique that we use to do this. Just go with whatever you're doing so you're laying an even wrap of cast material. You can kind of go around the one side, back around doing a figure eight, but then make sure you always check your calcaneus, make sure you've got the bottom aspect of that covered because that's where you're going to have breakdown. If you get your roll fully inundated with water and you don't generally have this type of pulling away flaw that you know you turn your back and it starts to unravel and you always have to come back and reposition it but if you allow your roll to get fully wet once the bubbles have stopped that's usually an indication that it's thoroughly wet all the way through from the outer portion of the roll all the way to the inner portion and then a lot of times you won't have that unwrapping effect that's so obnoxious stick a little better And that's another weak spot of any short leg cast is right around that Achilles area. If you take the patient off the stand too early, they'll have a tendency to let their foot drop. If you're not paying attention and constantly feeling back there, you'll see a wrinkle. But if you reinforce it strong enough, it usually will resist the wrinkle. In talking about Achilles, uh, a lot of times you'll put on a short leg cast for an Achilles injury. But the thing about that that's going to be different than this cast, you don't have to get them all the way up to 90 degrees because on an Achilles injury, they're going to be plantar flexed to allow for that Achilles to heal. We'll do serial casting on them, come back every week to where you're actually dorsal flexing that foot up, slowly stretching out the Achilles to help them with the range of motion, but you're allowing them to heal that Achilles tendon rupture or surgery. If you notice during the uh, drying portion of this cast, in a molding technique where you actually grab the belly of the gastroc with the backs of your hands and you give a good nice mold and squeeze, kind of lifting up on the distal end of the gastroc. This helps stabilize the cast so that it doesn't move with proper molding.
can tell right there on that anterior aspect, you can see how much padding he's got there. That is perfect. That's again the prominent area, whether they're going to be on a scooter or resting it down. If they're laying in bed, that cast's going to be heavy. It's going to pull down on there. That anterior aspect of that tibial spine, there's nothing covering that bone except for skin. There's no fat tissue. There's no muscle. That's very prominent there, so make sure you have that part padded well. So at this point, if there's any areas of concern on the first layer of cast material, you can trim it back fairly easily, as you can see Lance doing here. Generally, I like to keep the plantar portion of the cast extended out to the metatarsal heads and then cut back on the superior part so you have good toe flexion and range of motion. See, make sure that that fifth toe is not being impinged or pushed on by the lateral portion of the cast. And now's a good time to mold. If you're doing a non-weight bearing cast, it's still very important to try to keep them at 90 because when they come back and you transition them into a walking cast, you don't have a tight Achilles tendon and it's less work for you and less work for the patient. This is your final roll and we call that the money roll because this is the one that they actually pay for. Put a little more effort into your money roll and make it look good for the patient. Spend a little bit of time to smooth it out. Make sure that there's no edging on the distal or proximal end of the cast. Especially on this one, it's important to make sure you let that water completely saturate into the plastic on that cast tape. Wait for all the bubbles to stop coming out because when you finish here, this is the last part that's going to lay down on the cast. You want to make sure it has all the resin that's completely wet so it will adhere to the fiberglass. You'll notice as I unroll the first portion of that, I'll always give it a nice good tug. This is also kind of a little learning portion for new people who will be applying casts that this is the direction you roll. You roll it from the bottom and you don't turn it the other direction or you'll be finding it too much. Always, once again, check for weak spots. You can capture those with your first roll and then finish up approximately with your second roll. Start your rubbing technique now on the uh, first roll while it's still a little moist. Oftentimes on a short leg cast, if we do use a walking cast, uh, we've indicated that this is typically a non-weight bearing cast. We'll either apply a extra roll on the bottom of the foot to reinforce the bottom or we'll apply reinforcing strips to strengthen the bottom. It just depends on how active that patient's going to be. If they're young and full of energy, you can almost guarantee that they'll come back with a hole in the heel, even if you put them in a protective cast sandal. Most of your adults, typically do not wear the bottoms out, but if they rest it on the ground a lot, you'll want to make sure that that heel is very strong so that it doesn't break through. On this final application of this cast roll, you can put a lot of tension on it. It takes out any of the imperfections. It puts a little stretch into the fiberglass and just gives it a really nice finish. Factory edges usually don't laminate as well, so we like to cut those off. Last thing you want is your 
end of your roll coming back up, especially on a pediatric patient, they'll just sit and pull at it and try to unravel it and it ends up being a bad experience for them. short leg cast, 90 degrees, good distance between the popliteal area and also down below the uh, fibular head and good toe movement without any impingement. that work environment clean, put the towel down, it'll catch anything your vacuum doesn't. A lot of times I'll grab a big chuck or sometimes you have those big white drapes. Anything you find, the bigger the better to throw down underneath there because casts all spit out a lot of fiberglass, then you'll be walking on it the rest of the day. It gets a little bit slick, so do whatever you can to catch all that fiberglass as it comes off the cast. We're doing an evaluation. It's just always a good thing to do. I really like to look at the cast when it comes back after a two to four week healing process and see how much breakdown or any imperfections that may be in there and, and set it before and we'll continue to say you learn from your mistakes. cut behind the medial malleolus there. It's a very good practice to avoid those prominent areas when you're using the cast saw. We haven't talked much about the cast saw, but it's always a good thing that when you sit down prior to removing a cast or at the start of the day, you just kind of check your blade and make sure that that thing has enough teeth on it to actually work. Nothing more frustrating than having a dull cast blade. You run the risk of heating the blade up and then also the risk of burning the patient on a very dull, non-compliant cast blade. He uses his thumb as a thumb guard to help keep the tension so you can feel as soon as it breaks through the cast that it just guides right in there and then he can pull it back. If you're using it freehand, if you don't have any of your fingers actually touching the cast, you won't be able to anticipate when it's going to cut through and go deep and that's when you're going to burn somebody or cut somebody. There's always an option of using a, we call it a zip stick, a thin strip of plastic that's designed to slide underneath the cast. I will try to use it as often as I can if the patient is scared. It gives the patient peace of mind knowing that the cast saw will not hit their skin. Lance is cutting all the stockinette off the distal and proximal sides. This allows you to just pull that half of the cast off pretty easily and it avoids using the scissors on the malleolus and hitting into them. The skin's so sensitive that you drag scissors across them at the wrong angle and you can actually make them bleed.
like to examine the anterior crest of the tibia just to make sure that there was adequate padding and there's no abrasions, especially if they've been kneeling on a, on a walking device or a knee scooter. It's also a good practice as you're cutting up the tibia to have it just off to one side or the other so you're not dragging it right across the shin where there's no padding. So there's another variation of a short leg non-weight bearing cast and that's extending all the way out past the toes. Sometimes you'll have different injuries, different surgeries where the patient may have pins in their toes to where your provider or the patient themselves wants the cast to come out past the tip of the toes so they're not bumping their toes on something or you know, pounding that pin further into their toe than it already is. Oftentimes I will actually ask the patient, especially the elderly ones, if they would like their toes covered or not. And I am totally surprised at how many times they say, bring it past my toes. Just for protection, in the winter time they feel like it is going to keep their toes warmer. So if you're going to do this, just make sure you have adequate length on your stockinette to come out past the toes and still give yourself enough stockinette to fold back. And then also you can use the Alumafoam splint that we have shown in previous videos to give them that toe box because once you're extending that cast out, it used to be a size 8 shoe or cast, now they're wearing a size 11 shoe or cast. You know, you're extending that out quite a ways, so it becomes easier to compress the toes once you're wrapping your cast tape and your cast padding circumferentially and they will get maceration between the toes so just make sure you're using a toe box or something to keep it from squeezing the toes.